Among the many achievements of Pope John Paul II was his making clear that the Church's teaching concerning respect for life must be a priority for all the faithful. In his encyclical Evangelium Vitae, The Gospel of Life, John Paul stated that the gospel of life is at the heart of Jesus' message. Lovingly received day after day by the church, it is to be preached with dauntless fidelity as good news to the people of every age and culture. His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI has upheld this teaching as we move forward in the new millennium. Under his leadership and guidance, it is our task to share the message of the sanctity of life with those assigned to our pastoral care and the wider society. It is my hope that this DVD presentation will help explain the fullness of the Church's teaching on the value of life and the importance of love. I also hope that each of you watching this presentation will be personally enriched so that you can share the message of the gospel of life in your homes and communities. Life is a beautiful gift that we all cherish. Our Catholic understanding of the dignity of each and every human person is summarized in the book of Genesis, which tells us that men and women are made in the image and likeness of God. Our lives are a reflection of God's own life and thus possess an intrinsic dignity that no individual or government has a right to take away. This understanding of human dignity is not just a Catholic or religious belief. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that the dignity of the human person is derived from natural law. It's a fundamental truth written on our hearts and knowable by all. Our nation's founding fathers expressed the same belief in the Declaration of Independence when they wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words embrace a timeless and universal truth. In the Gospel of Life, Pope John Paul references an extensive list of threats to human dignity, including war, genocide, poverty, malnutrition of children caused by the unjust distribution of resources, and many more. In the contemporary environment, each day we sadly hear of attacks on human life through abortion, war, terrorism, human trafficking, and violence among the young in our cities. In the midst of the chaos, it can be difficult to maintain a vision of the dignity of the human person. Aware of the many challenges to life that surround us, Pope John Paul articulated a profound insight about why abortion and euthanasia in particular are unique threats that require special attention and priority. He noted that when life is taken through abortion or euthanasia, many of our contemporary culture do not regard it as a crime against human dignity. Instead, abortion and euthanasia are often held up as fundamental personal rights, a phenomenon that John Paul characterized as the eclipse of the value of life. In an eclipse, the moon blocks the light of the sun. Even though the light is there, we cannot see it clearly. When our culture lives in the darkness of the eclipse of the value of life, truth and freedom cannot be clearly seen and become distorted. Many people accept abortion and embryonic research and euthanasia as individual rights because they do not see clearly the value of each human life made in the image and likeness of God. Each year, one out of every four pregnancies in the United States is aborted. That means that every year, 1.2 million innocent children lose their lives, lose the chance to be born. The cumulative number during our lifetime is so great that it is now estimated that close to one-third of women of childbearing years have had an abortion. Many others, including men and medical personnel, are deeply affected by post-abortion pain and grief. 
a recent issue of the Columbia, the Knights of Columbus National Magazine, is dedicated a special report on the impact of abortion on men. I recommend that you take the time to read this very important and informative study. The Gospel of Life is a call to action by all who are committed to supporting the dignity of the human person. It recognizes that true freedom, happiness, and fulfillment are found in our understanding and following God's plan for humanity. Pope John Paul stated that to be actively pro-life is to contribute to the renewal of society through the promotion of the common good. And he reminded us that there can never be true peace in the world unless life is defended and promoted. We are called to be agents of hope and healing in our culture, and in particular, to offer care and compassion to those suffering from post-abortion pain and grief. Given the enormity of the challenges to human dignity in today's society, it can be daunting to consider the challenge of changing hearts, minds, and cultural attitudes with respect to the sanctity of life. As Catholics, we must accept the challenge and trust that we will find the needed strength and guidance in and through Jesus Christ. We know that the victory of life over death has already been won by His cross and resurrection. There is an eclipse over Calvary on Good Friday, and darkness covered the land. But the light of Christ was still present. The light was obscured but never extinguished. His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI's first encyclical letter to the Church and the world was entitled, Deus Caritas Est, God is Love. This must be our response to the culture of death, as we are made in the image and likeness of God. We are created in the image of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose communion of love brings forth supernatural love. This self-giving love is not just an intellectual or theological notion. It is the source and promise of our human dignity. The gift of human life comes from God, who has also given us the gift of participating in the ongoing creation of our world. Our human bodies are capable of bringing new life into the world. There is a beautiful dignity and mystery to the gift of new life brought about through procreation when a man and woman fully join their lives in marriage. Sadly, in our society, this fundamental truth has also been obscured behind the eclipse of the value of life. The key to understanding and living out the gospel of life is in the recognition that life is a precious gift to be treasured and respected at each and every stage of human development. No matter how small, how infirm, how dependent, or how old, the gospel of life calls us to make the choice to love God and love our neighbor, and to work to help our families, friends, and our society to understand the importance of making this choice. As Catholics, we are called to give particular witness to the choice for life. We are called to see the human dignity present in an elderly person nearing death in a nursing home, in a mentally or physically handicapped young person who will always need assistance with the most basic of human tasks, we are called to reach out with compassion to help the anxious mother who feels frightened and alone as she carries a tiny and vulnerable unborn child. In the difficult days of the early church faced with seemingly insurmountable challenges, Christ's followers succeeded in spreading the gospel message across the world. Our challenge today is not as dangerous as what the early Christians faced. But we can become discouraged when we see how many people have not heard or have rejected the message to choose life. Prayer, the sacraments, and the willingness to persevere in extending ourselves in self-giving love are essential to the mission. We are called to offer the world a vision of true love and life. How we respond to that call will have a profound effect on our culture, our church, our families, and our souls. We must rise to the challenge and make the commitment to live the gospel of life with joy and thanksgiving. Jesus is counting on us to be his witnesses in the world. Be assured of my prayers and gratitude 
for all that you do each day to help people draw closer to the love of God in and through His church.